Hello everyone. So today I thought I would share a bit of what a typical workday looks like for me. I really needed this week's video to be easy to film and edit because I'm already becoming a bit overwhelmed about making YouTube videos. Not that I'm not having fun so far, it's just that the schedule I'm imposing on myself is pretty disciplined and some weeks are crazier than others. I'm still trying to keep my business flowing at the same time because that's how I make an income, so it's just a lot to manage. I'm trying to ease up on my workaholic tendencies, but there's also a lot of stuff I want to do with my work. Um, so even though I will continue to make videos that show projects from start to finish, I want to also share a more realistic look at how I work because my process is actually a lot more sporadic than working on one thing beginning to end in a single day. I do have a zillion projects at various stages of completion all around me right now. I like having a lot of different pieces at different stages that I take turns working on because it keeps things interesting. So I just had my morning routine of having coffee and doing a little movement. Today I did yoga and then I had breakfast and I got dressed. When I wake up as I'm having coffee, I'll sit down and uh, pick up whatever's around me and work on it a little bit without giving it too much active thought. It's meditative and just as a habit that I've gotten into doing, I'm not particularly trying to be super productive when I wake up and start working first thing. It's just very mindless for me to do that. I tend to be more relaxed about my daily schedule when Lewis is home, but now since he's gone to work, I want to focus and get some work done myself. I have a tendency to overload my work schedule, uh, so I've been trying to keep my daily goals more manageable. For example, today I'm just going to stick to three goals. First one is I want to get some work done on my alchemy tapestry, which I have not touched since I made the video about unfinished projects. I want to pick a small portion of it and get a little bit of work done. My second goal is uh, to finish sewing a dress that I started a couple weeks ago. Just using a sewing pattern, like it's easy, but I still have a little bit left to finish. And that's just something for myself uh, to have like a nice dress and practice my sewing skills. My third goal is to prep a piece that is themed around the new moon in Aquarius, which is happening this Saturday. So that's just gonna be me picking out a fabric for the background and kind of figuring out what size it's gonna be and then drawing out a layout for me to embroider or bead or something. Those three things I believe I can tackle uh, between now and dinner time, which is when I start winding down with my working. I do still work on things if we're watching a movie or like hanging out after dinner, but that's not a part of my daily work goals. A bonus would also be if I took a little neighborhood walk, possibly getting a few vegetables because we're running low. And also it's a really nice day out and I want to take advantage of winter days that have nice weather because I'm spending a lot of time indoors. Since the alchemy tapestry is such a big project, the approach that works best for me is to break the work down into small sections. Today I'm going to work on finishing this last rose and the leaves above it, as well as this star up here which I plan on beading in gold but first doing an outline in this gold colored thread. When I began this, I was using darker shades of green for the leaves on the roses and very bright shades of red for the roses themselves, but because it's so large, when I would run out of colors, I would 
Use what was around, so the green got all over the place, some of the leaves are a bit lighter than others, and now I'm trying to finish off with dark green leaves so that both sides of the piece mirror each other and it all seems more cohesive in color. For this last rose, I'm going to do a classic bright red rose, but I'm using two other shades to give it dimension. This first one is the darkest shade that I have, and then after it I'm going to go in with a medium tone right here. I'd say it's pretty rare for me to use more than three colors to shade in a basic rose like this, especially this size. Maybe if it's something larger, I would increase the variation of shades, but for something this small, I think three is the perfect amount of different colors to have dimension but not have it take you forever. I'm going to be outlining the rose in a very dark shade of eggplant purple and I choose this because it really stands out against the red but picks up on the tones of violet that are in the red. Do you know what I mean? Um, I feel like if I outlined it in just a dark shade of red it wouldn't be contrasting enough but then the only other colors I can think of would be black or like a navy blue and I just like how this eggplant purple looks. Now that I'm done with that rose, I'm going to move on to the star and I feel like I'm making good time at this point in the day. For the outline, I split the six strands of embroidery floss in half, so we're using a three strand thread. It's also not very typical of me to do a preliminary outline for beading. I just want this piece to be special and because the points of the star are so narrow and squiggly, beads can be very tricky to have curvature and have like delicacy to them. I think the outline will add a nice detail of containment to the beads. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I'm thinking. For five years I've had these metal rods which I got when I was visiting family in the Netherlands. These metal balls screw on and off so the idea is you would embroider a piece that is long and narrow that I could sew around these rods and, and that's how they hang. So that's what I'm going to do for the piece that I'm thinking of and I'll finally make use for these set them aside but I just have to figure out what fabric I want to do. I decided to use this linen napkin that I've had from a thrifting trip and I folded down the edges to get an idea of what the dimensions are going to be once it's going to be hanging on the metal rods. I began drawing my new moon in Aquarius piece. What I knew was I wanted there to be a black moon for the new moon I wanted there to be a water jug and maybe some stars, but besides that I did not have too much of a game plan and made it up as I went along. had a thought as I was unfolding this it would be even cooler uh, to keep it as a square and add 
flowers here. I think it might just not be enough as a narrow piece, so I'm going to forego these metal rods and instead commit to the full square. And I'm going to draw some flowers here, just really basic folk flowers. I just can't help myself. I, I want to add more. this a lot more. I can't help it. I just want to add more stuff. It's hard for me to hold back. And I think what I want to do is add a little Aquarius symbol on this pot. That's done. I can feel good about that. We'll see if I can finish it in time for Saturday. Um, so this dress that I'm working on, it's just one of those things I'm doing for fun. It's a sewing pattern. It's vintage. I got it from Etsy. Doing stuff like this is my way of treating myself because it's still work, but I don't feel so much pressure to be producing things for my shop or for social media. And I just like practicing sewing and I like practicing patterns. So now that I've I'm feeling really good that I worked on the tapestry because I've been avoiding that for a really long time. I drew out the idea for the Aquarius piece. I also had done a little bit of work this morning. So now I am rewarding myself for the rest of the afternoon with trying to finish this dress. I have the main dress sewn together, and then what's left is I need to sew these sleeves. It's a very shiny, pink, silky fabric that I've had forever. I'm gonna hand stitch this down. So that might take longer than I anticipated. I have to sew the sleeves. I have to sew the sleeves to the dress, and then I have to do the neck binding in a similar way and then that's everything and then the dress is done. It's a bias cut dress, so it just goes overhead. Oh, and then I guess uh, I'd also have to sew the hem, which maybe I'll end up hand stitching to make it look nice, I'll see. I'm just gonna get going with that and hopefully I'll be done uh, before the sun starts to go down so that I could get outside and go for a little walk. The cats are getting hungry, so they're probably gonna be difficult uh, as I'm working. forgot about this dress and how it's more complicated than I initially thought when I started the day because I have made this pattern before. As you can see, it doesn't look like it fits me very well, but that's because the neck casing or the neck binding is more complicated because it involves me putting an elastic up here, which is not super difficult, but I don't want to do it right now. It's about four o'clock and um, that's when I give the cats dinner. So I think I'm going to save finishing the rest of this dress for a different day. I put in the sleeves, which was an accomplishment and they are hand sewn at the edges or the hems of the sleeves, I suppose. So the elastic up here, it's gonna wait. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'm not sure tomorrow. I was planning on editing this video, but I did get quite a bit done today and it is still light outside. So I think I'm gonna put my clothes back on, 
turn off the iron, turn off the sewing machine, feed the cats, see how I feel if I want to go on a little walk or if I want to pick up groceries or if I'm gonna just stay home and make food with whatever I've got around. I need to put warm clothes on at the moment. All right, everyone. I did decide I'm gonna go on a walk before the day is over, before there's uh, no more sunlight. I guess that was my video and that was my work day. I think it was pretty accurate to how I wake up, work a bit, have a few things that I uh, work on, stop, switch to something else, work on, stop, switch to something else. That seems to be how I operate. The only thing I guess that's inaccurate is that I'm not usually filming. Sorry, I'm trying to tie my shoe. I'm not usually filming myself uh, with the process, so it's a bit more of a workflow that's uh, natural. I had a pretty good day. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it was interesting. And uh, I'm excited for the next video and maybe I'll do something a little more specific, like a tutorial uh, it, about sewing or beading. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I look forward to being back with another video soon. So, bye.